I'm about to get into the sermon today. Uh, this is the first Sunday of February. Amen. I look good, don't I? Hey, hallelujah. I ain't afraid to say I look good. Amen. If devil don't like it, you can still attack. I've come too far to worry about people. I don't feel no waste Come too far from where I started from But nobody told me that the road would be God, I thank you for giving me the ability to bring forth a message. I thank you, Lord God, for giving me the, the church, Lord God, to pastor over, Lord God. I thank you for finding me worthy to work for you in the name of your son, Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for everything you have done and brought my way in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the messages that you have brought forth to me, Lord God. And I just want to give you praise, honor, and glory for all the YouTube sermons that are up, Lord God. I want to thank you for all the Instagram messages that are up. I want to thank you, Lord God, for all of the things that you have done through us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we God, and the ministry is very, very thankful yes. to you, Lord God, for what you have done for us. We do not uh, play games with what you have done with us, Lord God. We have entrusted us to bring forth your word to the people. You have given us authority to thread over scorpions and serpents and all manners of diseases and drugs and demons. But we thank you, Lord God, 
that we don't use that power to prostitute the gift, Lord God. We use it to uplift the kingdom. We are not in it for gain for you, Lord God. We're not trying to get financial gain from it, Lord God. But we want to get souls saved. And I thank you for this message that's coming forth. That it gets souls saved. That we be able to go out to tomorrow and tell somebody about Jesus. And feel good about telling them about church we have. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. That these words be settled in heaven. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to God's our sight, my Lord, my strength, and our my redeemer. In Jesus' name. We're going to be going into Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26. Amen. When you get it, let us say amen. 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 The topic today, he gave me, I don't remember exactly, but I know it has something to do with the sovereignty of God. It has something to do with the sovereignty of God. Amen. We have been booked this uh, month. <coughs> But we're going to find a way to get our co-pastor, if he accepts, to bring us a message. Probably next Saturday. Amen. Before we do the Thanksgiving, the, the, the Valentine's uh, celebration party. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, I'll, I'll go past the house yes. of prayer. I'd like to the beginning. If you want to mind. Uh, uh, Write that down, second Saturday, and let's keep the announcements that was given. I want to see them when, when you get at the end of the service that we born about Saturday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse seven, chapter 7, verse 26, and it says, For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Mm -hmm. This is what we strive to be. We strive to be faithful servants and sons of God. Amen. And when he gave me this, it taught me about Jesus. But that now that he's gone, we are representation of him. And if we are representation of him, we need to separate ourselves from sinners. And that's what the Bible says. And this is something that I've been dealing with when it comes to these wayward Christians or these wayward uh, street people or these wayward, I'm trying not to get into it too deep, but those of a perverse lifestyle, put it that way. Those of a perverse lifestyle. So when I see them in here, it's not that I don't want to be around them. It's just that the Bible says I must separate myself from sinners. So how do I separate myself from sinners? It's by moving myself away from them. Because what the Lord is telling us is that if you sit around the sinners and act like everything is all right, they will not change. But if you move away from them, they're going to say, well, what happened? And look at themselves and say, maybe my sin is causing people to disappear. Okay. And this is what's going on in many places. They are not willing to separate themselves from the sinful. They have the the word, it's the word of God, but they use it wrong. They say, well, the Lord said, let the wheat and tares grow together and here do the separation, so I'm going to keep all of them in here. No. Either grow or go. Because I'm not going to have you tell me what we cannot preach because it hurts your feelings. Okay. Oh, That's why we need to separate ourselves from the sinner, man, because the sinner don't want to get right, and he's going to cause confusion, saying you hurt his feelings. Right. Or her feelings. So I rather you just separate yourself. Right. And like the word said, when you're ready, come back. But until you're ready, don't play around. I'd rather you be hot 
or cold, not lukewarm. You cannot sit in the church sitting and think everything is going to be all right. And I'm going to tap dance around the word of God just for you. That's right. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And a sin is a sin. And if you do it, you need to be called out. Listen to what he said. Not all servants are sons and not all sons are are servants of God. My Lord, when I got that, I said, what are you saying, Lord? That's right. That's right. Not all servants are sons. And not all sons are servants. They may look like it, but they're not servants. They are God's chosen to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Today we must understand that God is, at, is a God that is sovereign. And he needs no one to help him get the job done. He does not need you. He does not need me. He does not need your boyfriend. He does not need your girlfriend. He does not need your husband or your wife. God is a sovereign God. Sovereign means he stands alone. Higher above everything else. He do not need no one to help him get anything done. But for your soul salvation, he allows you to work for him. And instead of you taking full advantage of it, you want to sit down and not do nothing. But he's given you an opportunity to work for him. Not that he needs you to, but so that you could benefit for your life and your family life to get better. You hearing me? You understand what, what he's saying? He said, in other words, don't look at people, but look at him. And you have a right to separate yourself from sin. The Bible said, come out from among them and be ye separated. And then it says a step further, touch not. Touch not. That doesn't mean don't go touch the, the filth. That means... And I'm literally saying, don't touch that sinful person. Listen to the synopsis. If he said, come out from, from amongst them, then if you're not amongst them, how can you touch them? So he's saying, touch not the unclean things. That person is unclean, touch them not. Why don't I be hanging out with an unclean person for? Birds that flock, that flock together must be staying together. If you with them, you must be having them. You have no business with that kind of lifestyle if you're not in that lifestyle unless you tell them to change that lifestyle. I know it's 20, what, 15, and they say we need to get with the Joneses. Well, you get with the Joneses. I'm staying with the Word of God. And if the Word of God says separate myself or deliver such a one to save for the destruction of the flesh, then I'm going to deliver him to save it. Or her to say, I ain't got no time to be playing with the devil. Because he sits in here, or she sits in here, and destroy the flock. We learned something Sunday when we went to this church over there, uh, uh, New Creation. And, and, and it was before, I knew it, but it, it had to be refreshed to me. And we learned something that that that, that the enemy is it, 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 it jumping from person to person. But you got to realize, it's not the person, it's the demon in the person. So when Jesus, my God, so when Jesus went to, to cast out, he did not cast out the person. He cast out the spirit of evil in that person. So he did not say, I'm going to slap you. All he said was, devil, come out and shut up. Yeah. Most times he said, hold your peace and don't even talk. Just come out. But we want to talk and communicate and play with the demon. Got no time to be friends with the devil. You got to issue the blood of Jesus. Demon, come out. Not going to be socializing at BBQs. Come on now. Because if the, if the rapture come, you going to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. So our job is to make sure we telling you about Jesus. He said, my words have I hid in the heart that I might not sin against the one that apostles say. Daily, they was giving forth the word of God. The power is in the Holy Ghost and the power is in the anointing. But for it to work, it needs the word of God. 
You can't have three hours of just jumping and dancing and think somebody's getting delivered. That's right. It's that my word heals them. My word delivers them. My word casts out demons. Not my music. Not my dance. That's right. Not my tongues. <coughs> not my prophecy. Prophecy will not deliver you. Right. Tongues will not deliver you. The word of God will deliver you. And cast out everything that's not evil. Because that's light. Once light comes, darkness got your goal. Yes, yes. And this is what he wants people to talk about. His sovereignty. When you get the sovereignty of God in you, you can stand alone. That's right. <laughs> and not be ashamed. That's right. Not be ashamed. We could be the only church on the block. Light blinking. No, I don't mind. Because I'm not going to be like other people. Just to have a whole bunch of people. Right. I'd rather have my nice little lighthouse by itself on the shore, yeah. right. Come on. bright as the sky, yeah, right. <laughs> than to have a dark house with a bunch of people. Wow. Not going to happen. He don't want that. So we get back into this. This is a perception. My God, I'm in here to talk. And he need not know when to help him. Get the jump in. The perception that God cannot do it without you is wrong. The perception that God cannot do it without you is wrong. And you might not believe it, but many people feel that way. Many people feel God needs me to do this. God needs me to do that. And they don't know God is not even with you when you start thinking like that. Come on when you think you're doing God a favor, he's long gone. Word. He said, your, your rags are filthy. Your garments are filthy. If it wasn't for Jesus, you 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 still be filthy. Wow. And you got the nerve to say, I'm going to do this for God. You're not doing him no favors. Not at all. If he bless me, then I'll do this. He ain't blessed me, so I'm not going to do this. You're going straight to hell for that attitude. Other words, what he wants you to say is, just because you're sovereignty, I will do this. Just because I know who you are, I will go to people. Just because I know you got my back, I will go pray for this person. The enemy, the devil wants to stop us from doing the work of God. Other words, he wants to give you tiredness, doubt, uh, low self-esteem, distractions. And that's his main thing, distractions. Mm -hmm. The phone ring. Somebody talking. Shadow moving by. You be like, you're in the spirit praying, and all of a sudden you see a shadow and you just lost your concentration. Yeah, that's, right. that's what he wants you to do. That's why we've been hearing for the past two weeks, go into your closet. When you're in your closet, you ain't got to worry about looking all around because you're closed in. Oh, God, Get a closet. Close the door and block out everything and see if you don't get an answer from God. You will start hearing his voice. You will start hearing his voice because he wants you somewhere where he can talk to you and get your attention. But if you, oh my God, if you're in the living room, you got the TV there, you got the radio there, you got the window there, you got the curtains there, you're going to see the kitchen. You ain't going to be able to concentrate on the will of God. So you just go in your closet, move the clothes, close the door, and stay right there for an hour or two. Nothing on. And I guarantee you, your days will start getting brighter. Yes. Every day, give an hour in your closet and see what happens. Yes, yes. Be like me, cut the light off. <laughs> cut the light off. Don't be afraid of the dark. His light shines in darkness. Can you, get, can you get that? His light shines in darkness. So why do you got the light on? Tell me this one right here. Pray in darkness. How about that? Amen? You don't have to always have the light on. He's the light of the world. You pray to him. Let him deal with the things that's going on. But remember, get a secret place. And let that closet be your secret place. Those got a closet, make a section in there. Amen. Just pull the coats back and make a section in there and close yourself in. And I 
guarantee you, things will start changing in your life. Mm. Get radical. Put a cover over your head. <laughs> Go in the closet and just stay there. Yeah. You know, we can pray and fall right to sleep in our prayer. Yes. Stay commune with God and just... Yep. But in prayer mode. And then when you wake up, say in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then while you're in the closet, sleeping in the prayer mode, the angels are doing whatever work they can do for you while you're resting in the spirit of the Lord. I like that. Go to sleep in prayer and you, you're in the spirit of the Lord. Yes. Because he's listening. He's there. He's around you. When, you. when you're praying, he's there. When you're talking to him, he's there. And that's his sovereignty. His sovereignty... Got no barriers. So no matter what happened, he will come through the mess. He's sovereign. That means he can come through anything. No wars can stop him. What do you think they was doing when they were sitting in the house? He walked right through the war. That's right. Why they were eating right through the war? Right. Like, wow, where did he come from? Nothing can stop God. Nothing can stop his son. So wherever you at, no matter what the hell is going on, you got a right to have a secret place. Listen to this. In the midst of the storm, grab your Jesus and he'll calm it. He will calm it. In every storm you get in, he's there. As long as you live in holy. He's there. I have the audacity to invite storms. People say I'm crazy because I invite storms. I invite hardship. I invite trouble. I invite that stuff. Why? Because I want to. I like my Lord fighting my battle. I like to see him do some stuff. I don't like to sit there and wait. I like Lord, come on, give me a challenge. Satan, hit me with your best shot. Because I know what God could do. So let's 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 do this. And you need to practice that because if you don't do nothing, then you don't know what God could do. Get some stuff going so you can see him work. Yeah, get in the ring. Don't be afraid to jump in the ring with that demon. The blood of Jesus, the Lord is with me. Whithersoever I goeth. He's my buckler. He's my shield. He's my protector. Start saying those words, and I guarantee you things will start changing. Oh, my God. I hear him just say, your conversation is what's causing your house to stay messed up. What you're saying in your house is killing your house. Wow. So other words, start speaking life to your house. Right. Start speaking prosperity to your house. Right. Start speaking Jesus to your house. Yeah. And I guarantee you, your house will change. Oh, yeah. And if that house don't change, he will build you one, walk right into it. If you know how to speak life. Speak, right. So you're going to your house and say, I thank God for these unpainted walls that will be painted. Right. Oh, my God. I thank God for this stove that ain't working, but it will be working or be given brand new. Lay your hands in there and keep talking. Don't say that stupid stove. I'm tired of it. 